Disclaimer. Many of the words in this video will be in Dutch. I do not speak Dutch, so if I pronounce something wrong, my dearest apologies. By the end of the 18th century, the Netherlands found themselves in a deep economic crisis, caused by the devastating Fourth Anglo-Dutch War. During this time, the banks of the Dutch Republic held much of the world's capital. For instance, the government-sponsored banks owned up to 40% of Great Britain's national debt. However, the people of the Netherlands grew increasingly discontent with the authoritarian regime of the Stadtholder, William V. This concentration of wealth and discontentment led to the formation of the Dutch Patriots by a minor Dutch noble named Jean van der Kappen tot den Pol, who were seeking to reduce the amount of power held by the Stadtholder. The revolution begins. Thus, a division emerged in the nation between the Orangists, who supported the Stadtholder, and the Patriots, who, inspired by the ideals of the Enlightenment, desired a more democratic government and a more equal society. The Patriots' various militias of armed civilians, mostly made up of people who came from the middle class, which, between 1783 and 1787, managed to take over several cities and regions in an effort to force new elections, which could oust the old government officials. By 1787, the Patriots had come to control all of Holland and the city of Utrecht, while the Orangists Orangis held the states of Gilders and Utrecht outside of its capital city. In 1785, the Stadtholder William V fled his palace in the west of the country for Nimgen, in Gelderland, as the states of Holland were not willing to send their troops to fight the Patriots and had effectively declared their intent for the revolution. In May of 1787, Stadtholder troops were defeated by a, the militia of Utrecht near Veshuwik, which caused any offensive capacities of the Orangists that had been left to be utterly destroyed, putting them on the defensive for the rest of the war. But this would all come to naught, as when Princess Wilhelmina was stopped by Patriot militia near this place on June the 28th, 1787. She applied to her brother, Frederick Wilhelm II of Prussia, for help. The Prussian phase of the revolution. On September 13th, responding to the request of Princess Wilhelmina, a Prussian army of 20,000 men under the command of Charles William Ferdinand, a Duke of Brunswick, crossed the border. When the army reached the forty fortress of Vienne, they found it deserted, and upon the arrival at the city of Utrecht, it promptly opened its gates to the army and let them in without a fight. At the fortress of Rouden, which had been making preparations for an actual defence, they almost immediately surrendered as soon as the Prussian army arrived, with there being no bloodshed. This was the last major fortress in Patriot hands, which had fallen to the Prussians with no actual combat. This would lead to the rapid fall of the rest of the Patriot territory. Amsterdam, the last city to hold out, surrendered on October 10th, 1787. Not long after the surrender of the city in Amsterdam, Mobs soon robbed and burnt the houses of many leading patriots, which many of have already fled the city. With the fall of Amsterdam, the patriots had lost control over all major cities, and the armed conflict part of the revolution was over. Back in control. The remnants of the patriots continued urging the citizens to resist the government, by distributing pamphlets and creating patriot clubs and holding public demonstrations. The government, however, responded by cracking down and pillaging the towns where opposition was concentrated. After this, most of the remaining patriots went into exile in France. While the Orangists strengthened their grip on the Dutch government, chiefly through the Grand Pensionary Lorenz Peter van de Spiegel's actions and policies. Proclamation of the Republic. 
The restoration was temporary, however, as only two years later the French Revolution began, which embraced many of the political ideas that the Patriots had espoused in their own revolt. The Patriots, exiled in France, enthusiastically supported the revolution, and when the French Revolutionary Army started spreading it, the Patriots joined in, hoping to liberate their own country from its authoritarian yoke. The Stadtholder joined the ill-fated First Coalition of Countries in their attempt to subdue the suddenly anti-Austrian French First Republic. This War of the First Coalition also proceeded da disastrously for the Stadtholder's forces, and in the severe winter of 1794-95, a French army under the General Charles Peter Grew, with the Dutch contingent under General Herman William Danders crossed the great frozen rivers that traditionally protected in the Netherlands from invasion. Aided by the fact that a substantial portion of the Dutch population looked favourably upon the invasion and often considered it a liberation, the French were quickly able to break the resistance of the forces of the Stadtholder and his Austrian and British allies. However, in many cities the revolution broke out before the French even arrived and revolutionary committees took over the city's governments, and provisionally the national government also. The states of Holland and West Friesland, for instance, were abolished and replaced with the provisional representatives of the people of Holland. Aftermath The Batavian Revolution ended with the proclamation of the Batavian Republic in 1795. William IV, the former Stadtholder, was forced to flee to England, where he issued the Q Letters proclaiming that all Dutch colonies were to fall under British rule, as they had declared war on the Batavian Republic. The new republic was very unstable, with several coups. In 1798, 1801, and 1805, which brought different groups of patriots and factions to power. The Batavian Republic saw its end in 1806, when the Kingdom of Holland was founded, with Napoleon's brother Louis Napoleon as King of Holland. In 1810, the area was annexed into the First French Empire, and then, in 1813, the Netherlands regained their independence with William's son, William Frederick, as Sovereign Prince.